Okay, are you guys ready? I just don't wanna, I just do not want to spoil any fun for you guys. The story is amazing. Okay, let's do this. Loving memory of Darren Greenfield, home at last. Okay, guys, this this message is very powerful because it has many many meanings behind it that we may do not know. But but it is very it will be very important to Darren, and he must be so proud. That is amazing. Okay, let's do this. A cat called Waverly. We're going to we're going to go on a journey of a cat called Waverly. Are you guys ready? Hello, Jess. Hello, Jess. Welcome to Storytime. I'm Anusha, and where you're in for a treat. Do let me know where you're tuning in from. And this is called the cat a cat called Waverly by Debbie Cleary. Let's do this. This is the story of a cat called Waverly. Born in a park, Waverly learned how to hunt, how to run from danger, and how to make friends. Lots of friends. Okay, guys, she is Waverly, and she was born in a park, and she's just, she is just so cute, and she has lots of friends. She has lots of friends, and during all those years, she has learned to do many tricks, hunt, run away from danger, making friends. She is just all over, as you can see, guys. Look at that. That's Waverly, and she lives in a park, and she gets many, many visitors all day. She's making lots of friends. Every day, Waverly had breakfast with the postman in Morningside, lunch with old Mrs. McKinnon and her kitties in Costafine, afternoon tea with the soldiers at the castle, but best of all, supper, a hug, and a warm bed for the night with his best friend, Donald. Guys, Waverly, Waverly, having so much fun guys she's getting the best out of her life because she is she is amazing and she has many many friends she she has breakfast with a postman she has uh, lunch with with her fr with her friend mrs mckinnon and then lunch then afternoon tea with the soldiers and their warm comfy bed with his friend donald with his friend donald this happy life went on for many years until one day Donald had to go far, far away, so far away that Weberly couldn't come to. Now guys, it's been an amazing time for Weberly making friends and hanging out with Donald, but then again, Donald has to move on for some reason. He has to move on, as you can see, but it looks like, it looks like he's going somewhere. He's signing up for something. And it looks like he's going to, he's going to en enroll himself in an army. And he's, he's trying to, he's trying to make a difference for his country. But Waverly couldn't join him. And Waverly tried to stow away in Donald's kit bag, but that didn't work. Waverly tried to stop Donald leaving, but that didn't work either. Now, now he's, he's, he, he's not able to go away with Donald. He has to pack his suitcase and everything. Now he's going, he's going in, going in, and he, well, I, I guess they're saying goodbye, guys, because the, uh, Weberly cannot fit in Donald's suitcase, and neither can tag along with him, so I guess it's a goodbye for them. Cat, said Donald, you have to stay here. My flatmates will look after you while I'm away. But Waverly didn't understand what Donald was saying. Waverly wanted Donald to stay. He told, he told Donald this, but Donald didn't understand a word Waverly said. Now, guys, it's a bit of a communication problem because they don't understand each other's languages, guys. They just understand love. They just understand support. They just understand huggings and they just understand the warmth but they do not understand the language and there's a bit of a problem there and it looks like they're saying goodbye to each other but then again it's a good thing that donald's flatmates are going to take care of waverly in his absence now waverly followed donald until he could follow no further for even a cat can't keep up with the train now he he tried to tag along with 
Donald as much as he can, but he just cannot keep up. He just cannot keep up, and that's the end of it. That's the end line. That's that's it for him. And well, that's goodbye, I guess. That's goodbye to my best friend. Poor Waverly. What would he do without his best friend? One by one, his other friends disappeared. A new postman came to Morningside and he didn't like cats. Oh no, guys. As much as he got assurance from Donald about, you know, having his friends to take care of him. But then again, one by one, everyone disappeared. Everyone disappeared. Now, old Mrs. McKinnon moved away and all her kitties vanished. Oh no. His his friend, who he used to have lunch every day, disappeared, guys, with her kittens. I think because, well, she sold her house and she moved away. In the meantime, Donald is there fighting in a war, guys. It looks like a war. Well, soldiers, helicopters, and it's so foggy. But meanwhile, he's, he's, he's getting alone, guys, because every one of his friends, Friends are moving away and Donald is there in a war. Oh no, guys, I think, I think he is Donald and well, I think they're going in a war zone and he's going to defend his country. And this is not good. This is not a very good, this is not a very, very good feeling, but but he has his army friends, but Donald, he's missing Weberly and Weberly missing him so much. One day at a castle, there was a huge bang from one o'clock, gone and Weberly never went back. Oh no, guys, do you remember that Weberly used to have afternoon tea? Used to have afternoon tea with the soldiers, shoulders at the castle, but then again, this, well, he's been hearing a lot of bang and a huge bang one day that he would never want to go back there. But worst of all, Donald's house was knocked down and just like that, Weberly was homeless. Oh no, guys, everything changed. Everything changed. His all, all his friends moved on. Donald is there fighting in a war. And, and then again, somebody, somebody, well, Donald, they knocked down Donald's house. It looks like they're going to build something big there. But then again, Weberly was homeless. Weberly was homeless. And then let's, just like that, there's nobody. He's all alone, all alone. All his friends are gone and there's nobody to take care of him. There's nobody to take care of him. And there you go, as you can see, guys, this is, it looks, it doesn't look good for Donald, guys. Donald is fighting in a war. And then this, his friends are getting injured. And in this picture, in this picture, I think Donald is saying goodbye to one of his army friends, guys. And this is not good. This is not good. And he is, he is hurting. He is hurting. He is hurting. And Weberly is alone and homeless and missing him. And they both are in so much pain. They both are in so much pain. Okay, let's do this. Edinburgh is full of places for a cat to live, and there is no shortage of people who love cats. However, Waverly didn't want to live anywhere without Donald. Home was where Donald was, wherever that might be. Now, guys, guys, they live in a place called Edinburgh, and well, they have amazing, lovely people there, lovely people there. And but, but Waverly didn't want to live anywhere because that's where he met Donald, and that's 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 their place. And they don't want; he doesn't want to go anywhere. And that is where Donald might come back, and he doesn't want to leave that place. So Waverly went to the station and waited and waited. And wait, guys, there's nothing else to do. He doesn't have Donald's address. He cannot call Donald. He cannot do anything. All his friends moved away. Now, the only thing left to do is, well, waiting by the station. If he could come and if he could come the same, same spot, same platform that he said goodbye. If he could come there and, you know, it just, I guess it's, it's only waiting. So he waited and waited and waited. Look at that. 
some people began to notice that lonely little cat on platform two at Weberly station. They called him Weberly because they thought that was his home. But Weberly knew home was where Donald was, wherever that might be. People took photographs and brought food for him. But even though he was desperately lonely, Weberly couldn't let anyone pick him up. Nobody, that is, except Donald. Now guys, well, you live in a place called Edinburgh and people are wonderful. And as you can see, they are, they are, trying, they are they're noticing him because he's been waiting in a, deck, in a bench for Donald for, for quite a long time. Now they're bringing him food, clicking photographs and trying to pick him and maybe trying to find him a new home. But home is where Donald is and he cannot, he cannot let anybody pick him. I cannot go anywhere because that's, that's, this is Donald's place and Donald might come visit and Donald might come back. I need to be here for him. And then look at that. He's waiting and he's waiting and he's waiting. But then again, it's good that they are, they are noticing and they're giving him food and, and shelter. But the station manager allowed Weberly to sleep in his warm office overnight. The cleaners shared their breakfast with him. Guys, the people at the station are very lovely. As you can see, they've been noticing that the cat who's been there all the time, all the time, they don't know that they're wait he's waiting for his friend, but he know, they know that this cat, the Waverly station, is his home. And they're trying to accommodate him, giving him warm, warm place to sleep and sharing breakfast. Well, He's being loved. He's being loved even though he's waiting for his friend. Endless, endless time of waiting. He doesn't, even, he doesn't even know if his friend is ever coming back. But, well, he cannot leave. He cannot leave. That's his home. The Waverly Station is his home. And that's where Donald might come back someday. So, so they, he, has, he has found a good, good accommodation, guys people are helping him and best of all once a week a kindly train driver at Weber let Weberly help her drive the train together they traveled up to the highlands and back Weberly peered out of the window wondering where Donald had gone was he in that forest on top of that mountain no guys he knew he knew the exact station exact train where Donald might come back and this kind kind train driver well lets him lets him tag along sometime and then he always wondered will he be in the forest is he up in the mountains when is he coming back is he safe where is he coming back then he misses his friend so much. He spends all day, every day, every moment of the day thinking about his friend Donald. Thinking about his friend Donald. Weverly missed his best friend more and more with each passing season. Now guys, seasons has come and gone and the people, he meet all kinds of people, guys. He is meeting all kinds of people at the station, but, but he misses his best friend and he's always there. He's always there every day waiting for Donald to come back to see if that's the day that he might see his best friend Donald that he might see and there's so many people and seasons come and go there's summer season there's winter season and there's rainy season and all kinds of seasons he's right there at the spot waiting for his friend because he doesn't want to miss him no -uh. he doesn't want to miss his friend coming back or noticing him he's he want to be there because he might be back someday he might be back someday and he doesn't want to miss him he might be back someday and this is this is so emotional because because he is he, he he's not giving up he is not giving up for with his friend and he might come back he might come back for his best friend and and seasons have come and gone but but his dedication, his passion, and his belief that he might see his friend is still there, is still there. This went on for many years until one day, 
on his way to platform two, Weberly heard a familiar voice. Spare change, the voice said. Spare a few pence for the homeless? They're sitting at the top of the station tips. Was Donald! Oh! Guys! Now all these years has passed. All these years have passed. And now he finally, he's finally heard his familiar voice of asking spare change of his mate Donald. And there he goes running. Donald! I've been waiting for you forever. I've been waiting for you forever. And there he goes. And that's Donald, everybody. He's back from the army. He looks safe. He looks safe and at least he's safe. And then, and then Weberly, he's been, he's been trying to notice his coming, come back and trying to hear his voice. And there he is, he notices and he is running, he's running to him. Weberly ran, weaving through feet, dodging suitcases until at last he was in front of his friend. Meow! He yelled and he jumped onto Donald's lap, purring and turning in circles and winding his tail around and round like a furry propeller. People stopped and stared. Nobody had ever seen Weberly do that before. Look, they said, that must be the man who belongs to Waverly. Now, guys, everybody at the stations are surprised because nobody has ever, ever saw, nobody has ever saw Waverly did that to friend. And look at that. Look at that moment of, of finding them, finding them together, finding the best friends together. Guys, look at the moment. Look at Donald's eyes. He cannot believe Waverly has been waiting him for so long. And that they united. They are united and everybody is shocked. Everybody is so happy to see Waverly, to see Waverly being connected with somebody because all these years, all these years, all they have seen him is being lonely at the station, waiting for somebody. And now, now they finally see him being reunited, guys. Reunited. Look at that. That is what we want to see. The union of everybody, the people who've been waiting for their loved ones for years and days. And this is what we want to see. And that's a success for Waverly. And that's peace. That is peace. And Donald, he is at peace. Guys, this is meow, said Waverly. I'm so glad you're home. But there was something wrong with Donald. His face was all wet and Waverly could hardly understand a word of his friend was saying. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter one single bit. As he curled up in Donald's lap, Waverly knew he was home at last. Guys, it didn't matter. It didn't matter where they are. It didn't matter if the surroundings wet. If it didn't matter. It didn't matter. They are with each other and that's home if you are with each other that's home it didn't matter where you are but if you are with each other that's home and that was weberly was guys they all named him weberly because they has been waiting he's been waiting at the weberly station forever he's been waiting years years and years and years passed by but he's waited for his friend he waited for his friend hoping that he might come back one day and he might hear his voice and he did he did and that's 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 so beautiful as you can see he was home at last he was home at last guys this is such an amazing book amazing book and i just it this is so amazing let's read the note from the author this book is about a real person, Darren Greenfield, a homeless war veteran who used to sit on the pavement at the top of Edinburgh's Waverly Steps. 
being visibly homeless in such a public place, some passers-by stopped for a chat and some gave him money and some people walked on without stopping. Sadly, for Darren and many others, their war, their war wasn't over when the fighting was done. I suspect that for Darren, the war never ended. I wrote and illustrated a cat called Waverly for Darren, but also for all the countless homeless people in our world. I wrote it to say, you are not forgotten. You are the yardstick by which we measure our own kindness and humanity. We all have the same need for shelter, for food, and for people to care about us. Therefore, we all are, we are all responsible for ensuring that every one of us has a safe place that we can call home. That is true. That is so true. That is so true. Set in a real city, Edinburgh, this is a poignant, unforgettable story of homelessness and enduring friendship by internationally renowned writer and artist, Debbie Cleary. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much for this beautiful book. And it's reminded of us kindness. It reminded us of us friendship. It reminded us of us passion. It reminded of us home. Home. That's what we feel when we see our loved ones and we wait for them no matter what. We wait for them and our our passion and our 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 string, our invisible string that are that as attached that are attached to our loved ones, they, it brings them back. It brings them back and surely did for Weberly because he's back. He's back with his best friend Donald and they are they will be together. They will be together forever. And this is such an amazing book. A cat called Weberly. What an amazing journey Weberly had at the Weberly station and such an inspiring story, such an inspiring story of hope, kindness, compassion, friendship, and peace. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. And Macy, Fliss, Oli, I hope you liked today's story. And this story is dedicated for you. The story is dedicated for you 